Okay, so again, yeah, I'm Roger Urbanic. I'm over here in West Seattle, and today we're going to talk about how to the real basics of what you need to know about squid fishing. So I'm, I'm standing on a dock that uh, the passenger ferry that goes across to Seattle uh, is uh, uh, docks at, and it's just a gorgeous setting. I mean, this, uh, uh, you know, just standing here and people come and take photographs and, you know, there's a little restaurant, Hawaiian restaurant at the end of the dock, and it's just a nice place to be, if nothing else. So during the, there's two times, basically, to do squid fishing. Uh, there's a daytime fishery and there's an evening fishery. Uh, the first thing you need to know is, yes, you do need a license to do it, but it's uh, but the good news is it's part of your shellfish license. So if you like clamming and oystering, etc., you've already got the, uh, the appropriate uh, permission to go out and, and do some squidding. The second thing is, uh, you know, the gear is fairly simple. You know, I'm basically here, I'm going to show you the gear. I mean, I'm using the same rod and reel that I would uh, if I'm uh, uh, fishing for trout or perch or, you know, most other species of fish. And the, the terminal end of the, uh, uh, my outfit is, you know, I, I use what they call a, a little corky, uh, you know, that, that will float in the water to basically show you, uh, identify, especially at night, exactly where your line is, how far away from shore you are, um, and make sure that you're not tangling up with the, the guy next to you. The next thing that you want to have is the very end of it, you use a fluorescent uh, squid lure that this part, this area right in here, uh, if you shine a light on it, it, it literally glows. It'll, it'll capture the light. And uh, uh, and the reason for that is, is squid are kind of like fireflies at night. They, they have a fluorescence to them, especially during the time that they're mating. And that's how they attract their mate. They'll kind of flash this fluorescence off and on. And, and uh, the mate, you know, another squid will say, wow, you know, it looks like they want to make some whoopee. And, you know, so they go over there and they kind of wrap their tentacles around the, uh, the squid lure. And the squid lure doesn't have any barbs on it. So, you know, basically it just uh, when they wrap their tentacles around it, it'll impale them just enough so that uh, you're able to reel them in. And then when you get them in, you just kind of tip it upside down and they fall off the, uh, the lure into your bucket. And uh, which is good that you don't have to handle them too much because they, they do have a little bit of black ink that they kind of squirt out when, they're, when there's danger uh, about. And, and so you use a, a pail, et cetera, that uh, uh, you don't mind getting a little bit dirty because it will be full of ink, uh, you know, if you're out squidding and, and doing fairly good. So... So the next thing is, again, you do this both at day and at night. I'll just, just today we're here in daylight, but just I'll give you an idea of a couple of the basic things that you need. Uh, if I were coming out here at night, I would use a, uh, a little light like this with a, a clamp uh, that I can clamp it to the, uh, the edge of the dock uh, and kind of shine, have the light shine down into the water. And then this little converter is, I hooked this up to a, uh, a marine battery, you know, just like the same kind of battery as in, in your car. And you get DC power from that. And uh, it, the DC power goes into this converter and then it comes out and you can't buy a DC light very easily. So you, it converts it to AC current and, uh, and shines a bright enough light that as it shines into the water, it's going to attract the squid, you know, that it, uh, you know, more, uh, you know, that light kind of helps them illuminate a little bit and it kind of draws them in from uh, being scattered around the lake uh, or the uh, sound a little bit more. During the nighttime, the, the best squid are in this body of water all year round. However, uh, the best times to catch them are usually October and November and December. That's when they basically come in uh, to uh, do their spawning. You know, the, the bulk of them do. I mean, there'll be some of it going on through various times of the year, but but most of the, the, the best fishery, uh, everybody says, you know, October, November, December, uh, you know, come out there. And, and during that time of year, if you come out 
in an evening and the squid are really in and they're uh, doing their thing, uh, you'll see this dock will be lined with 50 or 60 people. I mean, you just elbow to elbow in terms of getting a spot to fish from. And which is nice because you don't necessarily have to bring your own light. You can just kind of come in with your rod and reel and a couple of squid jigs and stand next to somebody that's got a light and, and uh, you know, kind of fish, you know, take advantage of that situation. So the next thing you want to uh, do is, uh, uh, you know, the, the squid, uh, especially during this October, November time frame, they like to come into the, uh, in, uh, into Elliott Bay and do their uh, mating usually during a rising tide, you know, so, so when it's going from low tide towards high tide, uh, and then maybe the next 15 minutes, a half hour after high tide, it's usually the best time of day to do that. And, and the same with during the day, uh, you know, there's going to be more activity. The squid are kind of swimming around and, and, uh, uh, being a lot more active at that time of day than, uh, than they are, uh, later on. So, uh, today I just happened to look and, you know, like the, uh, you know, the low tide was maybe half an hour ago and actually it was an hour ago and, uh, and it will be, uh, on a rising tide for the next uh, hour and a half. So the tide book is, as is in most, uh, uh, shellfish, uh, you know, acquisitions is an important uh, thing to take a look at. So during the, during the evening when you're fishing, you don't need to, you know, the lights attract the squid real close to the, the dock. So all you basically need to do is just uh, drop your lure right off the dock, down to the bottom, uh, reel it up a little bit, and then just kind of have a little bit of jigging motion. Sometimes the squid are kind of suspended mid, uh, you know, mid-level up. This water right here is probably about 30 feet deep uh, at the, the end of the dock. And sometimes, you know, most of the, more squid than not that are in the mating are going to be near the bottom. That's where the, the, uh, the vegetation to lay their eggs is going to be. Uh, but some, again, are suspended and they'll look for some kelp, pieces of floating kelp or something like that to lay their eggs on. So sometimes you kind of, you know, you watch what the people next to you are doing. If they say, ah, they're, you know, I'm getting them on the top or, you know, sometimes you'll actually see in the lights some of uh, some squid swimming, swimming around near the top. And you can just reel your uh, squid lure up near the top and jig it up a, a couple of times. And sometimes they'll come over and just grab it. So anyway, just to, so that's at night. Okay. So I'm going to just, because we're here during the daytime. Uh, what I'm going to do with my, uh, you know, uh, basic spin and, uh, spinning reel is uh, it just I'm going to cast it out there, let it sink to the bottom, and then I'm going to bring it in kind of a few feet at a time uh, by jerking it. it. When I jerk it, it will come up off the bottom, maybe two or three feet, and then I, I let loose of it, count to maybe ten let it settle down to the bottom and then keep repeating that until I get fairly close to the dock. And then I pick it up and I cast out again. So then the other thing is, especially at night, another little tool is I carry a little portable flashlight uh, in my, uh, in my pocket and I, I shine this light on the squid lure itself and have it and help it get fluorescent since it's, there's no, uh, light at night. So I get this fluorescence going. And then once I uh, uh, throw it out there, they'll, the other squid will say, Hey, you know, here's a live one. Let's, uh, let's go make friends. And uh, so having that little light uh, and the people next to you having the bigger light that attracts them into the, the dock, that's kind of the secret of getting these, these squid in your bucket. And then usually what you want to do, the limit is 10 pounds. Uh, and you can fill a little gallon sized bucket about three quarters of the way full, and that'll be about your uh, 10 pound limit. You can watch again, uh, you know, what the people next to you are doing, but, uh, and that'll be several meals. I mean, usually, uh, you know, three, four, five squid. Uh, uh, and the squid that you're getting, they're, they're probably, oh, 
on average, maybe six to eight inches long. Uh, so they're not these big, uh, uh, you know, squid that you'll get down in Mexico or something like that. These, uh, you know, these are, these are, uh, you know, quarter of a pound a piece or something on that order. So, okay, I'm going to just uh, show you the, the basic casting uh, that I'm doing here. I'm going to, you know, just let the lure go out. You see the splash out there in the water. Then I'll count to probably 15 or 20, let it sink down. Maybe uh, make sure the, the line is coming off my, uh, uh, my reel adequately uh, until it kind of, uh, and then I'll watch the slack. Uh, you know, the, whether the line is uh, getting taut or not as it's sinking down to the bottom. And then again, at, when it, you know, after about, you know, 10 seconds or so, it should be down on the bottom. So then I'll click my reel closed and start uh, uh, reeling it in a little bit. Okay, so again, I've cast out, I've let it sink to the bottom. Now I'm in the process of kind of bringing it in at a, uh, at a rate that is liable to uh, uh, attract the squid. So I basically lift my rod up, uh, let it sink back down, and this is pulling the jig or the squid uh, lure off the bottom to about three or four feet off the bottom. And then I let it settle down to the bottom. I count to about ten, and then I uh, start to uh, you know, repeat the process. So I uh, just continue to uh, do this motion. So during the process of doing this, both day and night, you'll you'll have other things that will uh, uh, you know be attracted to or accidentally get hooked to your squid jig. I mean, I've caught crab, I've caught uh, a little small uh, octopus. Oh yeah, I've caught some small uh, 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 bait fish, some small uh, even some small salmon that will come by in school that'll just accidentally get in, impaled on it. And catch and release them and drop them back into the water. Uh, but it's it's really an interesting fishery. You'll because of the fact that the when the squid are really in, you'll have seals and sea lions out here. Uh, you'll have a lot of diving birds that uh, it, I mean it's a big fishery and, and this area that we're fishing at, this this West Seattle bridge, just uh, you know a couple hundred yards that way is the mouth of the Duwamish River, which is a, a river that the salmon spawn in. They'll go up there. And so this dock during the fall, people come here and they're, uh, they're casting uh, different kinds of jigs out there to catch salmon. And, uh, and they'll have, uh, you know, because there's a distance down here, you don't have a long enough handled net to get down there. What they do is they use... Uh, what they call ring nets that they use for crab. Uh, use that in place of a, uh, a landing net. So anyway, that's uh, that's a day in the in the outdoors uh, here at West Seattle. And uh, you know, with any luck, we'll uh, we'll have a whole bucket full of squid, uh, uh, you know, to take home tonight.